this is one way we can write out our displacement equation describing the positions of the particles of a wave. These would be pieces of a string um, or molecules of water in, at the surface of uh, an ocean. But it's, it's describing the positions of all those particles. So they extend over space. That's why it's a function of position and a function of time because they're changing in time. And we, this is the amplitude. Remember this k is just a, a way of simplifying writing 2 pi over lambda. We call it the wave number. And then this is the angular frequency, um, which is related to the regular frequency, just changing it to a radian value. So it's 2 pi f or 2 pi over the period. And then this is how the wave starts, or at least when we start our time, what position is the wave in. If this were 0, and we're looking at the origin, so that's the zero at zero time, then this would be a pure sine wave, and which means it's coming out of the origin going upward. Okay, so the important thing here is to recognize this is descri describing all the particles that make up the wave. There's a piece here, this angular um, frequency um, comes from the angular s or the, from the wave speed which we found in an earlier video and that w wave speed is describing the speed of the wave as it moves left or right now what we want to find out is what's the particle speed now we know that the particle is not traveling it's not moving away from a point it's always coming back to it and oscillating about it but the particles do have a speed and it is simply taking the derivative of this function with respect to time. Knowing that this function describes the particle's positions and, and, and in time, we can just take the derivative to find the particle velocities. So if I want to find the velocity of the particles, which would also be a function of position and time, I need to take the derivative of that equation with respect to time. So let's do that together. Okay, derivative of d with respect to time. Okay, sorry, with respect to time. All right, uh, where does time occur? It occurs right here. It's inside the sine function. So we're going to have to do a chain rule. So we'll just call this, you know, some some preliminary uh, variable. Let's call it y. So sine of y. We have a sine of y. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So we're going to get, I'll bring it down here, a cosine of everything in that argument, our y, which in this case is kx minus omega t plus v0. Okay, so that's our first step. Now that was taking the derivative of sine of y, but now we need to take the derivative of y with respect to time. And so this is a constant with respect to time, so it goes to zero. The derivative of that goes to zero. This is also a constant, and so it yeah, derivative of it goes to zero. So the only thing I'm left with is the derivative of this middle term with respect to time. And it's just a constant times time, which means the derivative will just be that constant. But remember, no, there is a minus sign there. So I'm going to have to multiply this whole thing doing the chain rule by the derivative of this, which is negative omega. I'm going to go ahead and put that out front, negative omega, and I have the velocity of the particles oscillating about their equilibrium point. And it ought to be uh, a sinusoidal function. Here it's a cosine, but it's an oscillatory function that shows that these particles' velocities are changing at, um, in a sinusoidal way, you know, speeding up, slowing down, going the other direction, and reversing direction all the time. And, and that's re reflected here. So their, their oscillatory motion's the same. It's just how do they start. And then this omega here changes the units, so we have a proper velocity unit. Okay, we have meters, and this is radians per second. Radians is, has, has no real dimensions to it. And so it's meters per second, and we have proper units there. Now we could actually take this one step further and take another derivative of this to get our acceleration which if we do, we'd get the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, but then we'd get a minus omega again, so we have an acceleration as a function of position and time is equal to 
we have we get one here we start with a minus sign we get a minus sign from taking the derivative of cosine and then we get another minus sign from the chain rule into here leaving us with an overall minus sign we have three minus signs so we have negative and now we have two factors of omega another omega comes out a sine kx minus omega t plus b0 so that's our acceleration so we have our kinematic values for the particles that make up the wave whereas the wave itself the wave speed is represented within this angular frequency and that the other parameters like a lambda the wavelength that describe the wave generally but these describe the, the, the position velocity acceleration of all the particles of the wave.